Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm going to be taking a look at the Easy RC 540mm PA18 Super Cub. This is a ready to fly model and it is tiny. This is the box that it comes in. Don't be fooled by the name Easy RC. It is a branch of FMS which is why the model looks exactly like the bigger version that FMS make. In fact FMS sent me this product. Now it's aimed at beginners but I'm not too convinced about that. You see, when I first wanted to get into the hobby when I was like, I don't know, eight years old, I thought, oh, you know, I'll get like a, a small plane, you know, because, you know, not much weight to it, even though back then there was because, you know, they were made out of balsa. But the, the reality is, the smaller the plane is, the harder it is to fly. Now, we're quite lucky these days because maybe 10 years ago something like this wouldn't fly at all. But we've got gyros that do the impossible and they stabilize these really unstable models. So this has got a built-in gyro. It comes with this toy grade transmitter. All you have to do is add four AA batteries and you need a screwdriver because for some reason toy grade models they have to have a screw on the battery plate I guess you know so youngins don't go licking the batteries and as you can see I've converted this to mode one and you might be thinking why did you do that well this is another problem that I've got with this model you see I don't think this model is going to be too suitable for beginners however I think it would have been suitable for people like me with a bit more experience who are just getting into miniatures for example I reviewed the P47 and there's also a Spitfire and a Corsair and a P51 and they're all fantastic. They're not the easiest things to fly, but the one thing they do is they will bind to a multi-module radio like the Radio Master TX16S. This one, sadly, does not do that. I spent a good couple of hours going through all of the protocols and it won't bind to any of them, which is such a shame and is why I had to convert the provided transmitter to mode one which isn't easy I have a video on the channel on how to do that it's called something like convert any toy grade transmitter or any transmitter to any mode but basically these are Xbox style parts they don't have the resolution of a hobby grade transmitter and to convert it to a different mode the pots are soldered directly to the circuit board so you have to desolder them swap them over and also you have to sort of like put wires from one pad to the other especially with this one because a couple of the controls were reversed when i switched the pots over anyways one good thing about it is that it's nice and light it's 19 grams so i think even if you tried to break it or crash it or even damage it. I don't think that would be possible. Another good thing is there is no glue whatsoever. So everything is just press fit. You'll have to adjust the control linkages a little bit. I like the fact that we've got full control surfaces. So elevator, rudder, ailerons. Uh, that's quite rare these days. I'm not a big fan of wings. I prefer traditional general aviation uh, which this is based off and you can see we've got all little tiny micro servos there. In fact I can probably build it uh, while I am filming it. You actually get a battery. It's got a nice sort of battery hatch there. You only get the single battery and it does come with a charger as well. It's just like a USB micro lozzy charger. It does have an on and off switch which I absolutely love. I wish more things had a on and off switch. That goes in there and it's a little bit tight actually but there we go. That just clips in there and you can buy those batteries everywhere. Uh, they're really cheap. 
So we've got some wheels here, can't imagine a scenario where you would be able to actually use the wheels, you certainly wouldn't be able to fly this guy indoors, you know, with these tiny micro planes. Speed is your friend and no matter how big your sports hall is, uh, you're not going to be able to turn in time before you hit some kind of wall. There's also a uh, removable tail wheel as well. That's not really going to do much other than, you know, just look nice. This is all foam, so, you know, it's quite nice and scale. It's not attached to the rudder. So uh, it's not going to help you if you're trying to uh, taxi it on the ground. Not that I think you would do that anyways. The motor it is a brushed motor and it's geared. So then we have got these uh, control linkages here and those will just link up to this top servo. This isn't the best way of uh, doing ailerons at all but uh, well it gets the weight down and it's what they have gone for so you just slide those in there like so and then the wing it just clips on so we've got at the back here it just slides in and then it just clips on nicely uh, you are going to have to adjust the length of these so that when they are connected the ailerons are both straight you need to be really careful i've actually broken one of these uh, because i'm really heavy-handed but fms has great customer service uh, actually i think it goes in the top one so i'm already trying to put it in the wrong one you see i'm going to end up breaking it again so i thought i'd be able to do that on camera but my hands are too shaky as you can see there that just connects up nice and easily you just have to you know turn left or right until you get them lined up and the last thing to do is to install these struts and i thought are these actually just for show but if you look at the wing no, they are not just for show. The manual does say, oh, it's got carbon fiber, you know, struts in it. But actually on the wing, it's just in the ailerons and also in the tailplane. So these are actually functional. So these need to be clipped on. The only thing that I have found, though, is, you see, a, a cub kind of has like a dihedral and when you install these things what it does is it, it kind of forces the wing a little bit flat uh, which means that you know it's not going to be quite as stable this is one of those other things that i have to do off camera but anyways clip there clip there and same on both sides Less bend in the wings, in fact, no bend in the wings, but as you can see, it has straightened the wing out. Would have been nice to have a little bit dihedral for stability. The prop is cool as well. It just clips on, so, you know, if you have a crash, then it will just pop off. Another couple of nice things as well, we have got some mechanical trims here, so, you know, just squeeze them or whatever uh, if you are having trim problems uh, it comes pre-bound we've got trims here we have got different modes so like there's a beginner mode then there's a advanced mode which still has the gyro and then there's no gyro whatsoever um, it's got a aerobatic button <laughs> which I don't like again but fair enough so uh, yeah if you are in I think it's sort of like the advanced mode and uh, press the button and then put like say aileron in then it'll do a roll on its own and I think it'll do a loop on its own as well I don't like that 
and with stability off you can do those maneuvers yourself that is if it's even flyable without the gyro alrighty let's give this guy a go I am in beginner mode first of all and I'm gonna give it a lot of throttle because I think this thing may be unstable at lower throttle so it's going oh yeah now it's not a massively windy day here today but it's getting blown around let's see if I slow it down a bit seems a bit tail heavy only just slightly uh, beginner mode it limits the angle but oh yeah and we've got eight kilometer wind today needs that rudder to bring it around Let's uh, let's try the the middle mode. There we go. The aileron's very docile, but you know it's a trainer, I guess, with small ailerons. It's really getting knocked around. You're gonna need a completely. Uh, flat calm day if you want smooth fly out of this guy and uh, just like the P47 that I reviewed previously it's got an advanced mode which has no stabilization but you know what it, it, it's better turning it with the rudder actually don't need to fly it too fast it's all right it's all right and you know what this transmitter with the the xbox style pots uh actually surprise it, it it's enough obviously i would prefer it if i could bind it to the radio master but went through all of the protocols and nothing would bind and for me that's sort of the biggest shame about this thing yeah you can't really do bank and yank with this one let's try let's try back try bank and yank and it doesn't want to turn no nah. You need the rudder, you need to coordinate the rudder for sure. Which is something that a beginner would not do. To nice rudder authority at least. But I'm basically flying this on rudder and elevator. Maybe if I give it a bit more speed Nah, it needs that rudder to, to uh, come around. I'm gonna give it a bit of a uh, bit of down trim. It's a bit better. That's full throttle and then downwind. It's not cutting through the air any better. Let's see if we can do a loop. No. <laughs> so not aerobatic. I think this thing has it got it's got an aerobatic button. What happens if I press that? Let's try. It's just beeping. Oh, ho, ho. Ah, 
Interesting. So does the aerobatic button just, it, it doesn't seem to do a roll. It just allows you to do a roll, I think. Yeah, so. Ah, so in the middle mode, the angle is still limited. It's just less of a limited angle. Look at that. So when it's, when it's beeping, all that's saying is, for a brief second, I'm gonna let you. That's why it didn't do a loop either. Oh, hang on, yeah. <laughs> right, okay, you press the button and then move the aileron in the direction that you want it to roll and it does a, a, a full roll. And adds a little bit of elevator as well. So, does that mean then that the only way that you've got full control of everything? I uh, see, no, I don't like that. So, unlike the P51, uh, the, the middle mode still limits the bank angle. And the only way that you have full control is with no gyro at all, which these tiny planes don't like things all over the place. What well, can I do a roll now? Oh, <laughs> it just did that all on its own. Yeah, but it does not fly nice in this advanced mode. Uh, no stabilization whatsoever back into the middle. So I guess the idea of this is just for beginners. And then you've got your aerobatic button. It's going to lift the elevator uh, on its own to do sort of a barrel roll. The angle that you can tilt the wing at is limited in all of the gyro modes, they really should have given a, a mode that gives you the freedom of all movements, but then just have it stabilized. You don't have that with this. It's either stability on with a limited uh, bank angle or no stability at all, and it flies, let's say, challenging. <laughs> I think you're gonna get a nice flight time out of it, but. You know, I, I just want to say, uh, same with the, uh, the P-47. It's easy to think that these small aeroplanes are great for beginners. They're not. The smaller the aeroplane, the more difficult it is to fly. And yeah, we've got these stabilizers and stuff. And, uh, you know, I've been flying, what? Well, 30 years or, or something like that. So, you know, I've got a fair amount of experience and I'm flying it, but sometimes I don't feel like I'm in complete control of it. So, a beginner might get it going, um, but I'm not sure you'll get the best experience out of it. Now, there are people out there that love to collect, including myself, these, uh, these micro planes. So maybe it's for, for that crowd. Now I'm on full throttle here and it looks like my battery's spent. So uh, let's come in for a landing and hopefully these uh, wheels won't rip off. Now we've got a, a complete crosswind here. So I'm going to land it in front of me or attempt to. It's just going to tip forward in the grass, but there you go. So that is my review of the FMS P18. I'll put a link in the video description as well as a pinned comment if this takes your fancy. And as always, thanks so much for watching. Please continue to subscribe. Cheers.